Welcome, well, fo welcome, folks, to another edition of Geek Culture Congress. My name is Louis Speedy Jr. Gonzalez, and um, today, what are we talking about today? Man, spoiler-free review of The Clone Wars Season 7. Incredible. The final episode was dropped uh, today at midnight, and uh, it, uh, Victory and Death was the name of the final episode of this four-part series. Ahsoka Tano, you see how pretty much how she deals with um, being uh, attacked by the clones, by the clone troopers when Order 66 is called, and um, the fallout of that, and man, what, uh, the gravity and the, the drama of the episode is really well done, uh, my hat's off to, to the creators of the Clone Wars, um, David Filoni is... He, he really has this pulse on what Star Wars is all about. And uh, this episode was great. Um, we get a little closure. How did Ahsoka escape? And also Rex survive as well. And how did Darth Maul uh, survive Order 66 as well? Um, how he was able to escape as well. So I definitely uh, recommend it. If you're going to watch anything of the Clone Wars, you just want to skip over, skip through it, watch the episodes that interest you most. Um, if you don't want to watch it from beginning to end, I definitely recommend you catch these last four episodes of the final uh, season of Clone Wars on Disney Plus right now. Uh, is the Siege of Mandalore um, and uh, Ahsoka Tano's story arc um, before we see her again in Star Wars Rebels. I actually enjoyed it so much. I started watching Star Wars Rebels again today. Just the the key episodes with Ahsoka Tano and and Rex. Just to refresh myself, ref, re, remind myself actually what, uh, you know, what they went through as far as after the Clone Wars was done and all that good stuff. So highly recommend it, man. Five out of five. The whole series was enjoyable. See, not everything has to be about the Skywalkers and yeah, or, you know, the prequels or, uh, or the sequels, should I say? And it was really enjoyable. Um, I think if this this. Dave Filoni and and all the other guys, John Favreau with the Mandalorian, um, they keep doing Star Wars stuff and keep being behind everything there. I think Star Wars is gonna have a bright future wherever whatever direction they want to go with. You know, if they want to continue after the sequels or wherever they want to go, man. I think they're really gonna touch it. Um, I think they really really get what we're looking for um, as soon as you know they're done um, with Mandalorian as well. And then they start talking talk about these High Republic stuff. So, today, man, a lot of rumors today. So let me get my uh, let me get my myself here squared out. Um, lots of rumors today uh, hitting the uh, rumor mill. Um, the biggest announcement. I don't think it's much of a rumor, more of an announcement, is that um, Taiga Watiti. Uh, I think that's his name. Oh, gosh. Oh, sorry, my internet is being slow today because I'm streaming live to you guys. <laughs> oh, Facebook does not want to want to uh, work here. Jeez. Um, Taiga Watiti Wati Wati is uh, going to be directing a brand new Star Wars movie. We don't know what that looks like or what that's going to be like at all. Um, only thing that we know is that he is going to do it. That's it. He is. It's been confirmed. So he will be directing a brand new Star Wars movie. I don't know if it's going to be a, a trilogy or anything. I have no idea what's going to happen with that. So um, that just hit the news cycle. So I, I invite you to go check that out. And what else is going on? Um, we started hearing some rumor mill um, from uh, the MCU. More. Um, in the vein of the MCU TV shows, and more specifically, Daredevil. And I'll actually read the, sco the, the scoop, um, which was provided by Mikey Sutton. Mikey Sutton is an insider, and uh, he provides scoops and you know behind-the-scenes news of what's coming soon. And uh, whenever he has it on, on Nerdum, period, anything, DC, Marvel, whatever, Star Wars, anything, uh, he... Drops drops a uh, little tidbits here and there um, in a special forum that I'm in. 
Taika Waititi is going to be doing that movie. Um, but the other news is coming out of the MCU. And I'll actually read it. The actual whole scoop for you. Okay. Uh, for three seasons on Netflix, Daredevil busted through seedy hallways and shed blood and gutters. It was among the MCU's most crit- critically acclaimed and popular TV series, echoing the streetwise grit and Catholic subtext of Frank Miller's iconic take on the character. With the creation of Disney Plus and the removal of the Marvel programs on Netflix, its future has been the subject of specula- speculation and rumor. In September, amidst a flurry of public rage bait, um, he reported that Daredevil would return to television and its adult nature intact. At this time, there was talk of it being revived either on FX or Hulu, but that's all it was, discussions. Uh, he checked in with his sources last month to see if anything has changed with the rights, if the gossip of them being returned early were true. He told them that they were not, um, and he suspects that this has not changed at all. He was given an update, um, that one that will excite fans who, are been, who have been desiring a closer connection with this and the theatrical MCU. It was revealed to him, uh, that although they legally can't work on the series at the moment talks continue on what will be done first of all they're leaning on bringing the series to hulu instead of fx the budget will be higher but on the level of what they're doing for disney plus i mean if that's an issue um you know the quality was really good on netflix i don't i i I can only imagine how much better it would be um they would also like some of the rougher edged mcu characters possibly guests on the show like nick fury but there's a, another difference. While Kevin Feige liked the original series, he's not so keen on continuing with what Netflix did and instead incorporate his own vision. However, his preference is to retain Charlie Cox and some of the other cast. No negotiations has begun yet because they simply are not, are not allowed to yet. So it's just not, they're not allowed right now because it's still on Netflix, uh, unfortunately. So what we're looking at is a possible soft reboot one that is firmly set in the MCU. Uh, if Ryan Reynolds can play two different versions of Deadpool, so can Cox and Daredevil. The multiverse can explain that away if need be, I guess. Uh, there are no plans for Daredevil to join the Avengers, though. Marvel Knights? Close. They have talked about Daredevil joining forces with Moon Knight, the Punisher, and Ghost Rider, among others, in the Midnight Suns. Interesting. Gradually developing story, so stay tuned for the updates. For now, the Man of Fear will be back, and he won't be alone. So, yes, Daredevil will be coming back eventually, somehow, some way, uh, to the MCU in some form of TV show, possibly, I mean, Disney Plus show or something like that. Uh, oh, definitely on Hulu, more than likely the gritty, the grittier, dirtier, nastier one. The other scoop is about Spider Man, and uh, this is interesting. Uh, fans of the uh, Spider Verse. Um, so he says Spider-Man is coming to television. It just won't be Peter Parker. He received a phone call earlier this evening, letting him know that the Sp- excuse me that a Spider-Man 2099 live action show has been discussed for Disney Plus. In other words, this will be a Sony Marvel Studios uh, collaboration if it's greenlit with Kevin Feige manning the controls. Interesting. Um, uh, he said he says he knows quite little of the property, and while he usually tries to dig deeper for releasing stories such as this, the source has been accurate in the past. I will continue to ask around and keep you all updated. So if you got those Spider-Man 2099s or that, I think it's Amazing Spider-Man 365 with the hologram on it, the first uh, the first um, appearance of uh, Spider-Man 2009. Uh, but hold on to it; it's gonna be worth a little bit of money. Okay. So that's about it, man. That's about it as far as the news I got here on Geek Culture Congress. Um, if anyone's following the esports news, I just put a um, a blog post up uh, congratulating the Florida Mayhem. They're in the Overwatch League top ten right now. Um, they're they're on a roll. They got a, a pretty easy win against uh, Boston. Uh, they got another uh, game coming up against Vancouver. They're also struggling too, so they should get another win there. And uh, they should be uh, pretty healthy to stick in it. Um, I don't know how far they're going to get, but congratulations to them. Florida Mayhem are in the Overwatch League right now, and they're doing well. So, folks, that's it. That's all I got. <laughs> Thanks so much for hanging out with me. I guess I'll just uh, end the show a little early today. Um, as always, uh, if you got anything you want to talk about, follow us on Facebook, uh, Geek Culture Congress. That's three words. You can follow the Instagram, Geek Culture Congress, all together. 
um, and uh, I'm definitely more active on the Facebook page, so I highly recommend the Facebook page even more. You can listen to the podcast or RSS feed, the podcast versions of this, uh, on bpodstudios.com or anywhere where you consume your podcast, Spotify, all that good stuff. Uh, thank you so much for hanging out with us. Hopefully, I'll return with uh, the folks uh, next week. Hopefully, we'll be back in the studio finally. Hopefully, this pandemic will be back to normal here in the state of Florida, at least that I can go back to the studio. Uh, and hopefully, I'll be back with uh, Joey and and Joey and Tarek and the whole gang here on the show, so you can hear everyone's banter and opinions about everything that's going on in Nerdum. May the fourth be with you. Go watch Clone Wars. Watch at least you're gonna watch anything. Watch the last four episodes of season seven. Uh, I don't think you'll be disappointed at all, especially if you're an Ahsoka Tano fan. I highly recommend it. Have a good one, guys. Thank you for hanging out here at Geek Culture Congress. Until next time, peace.